Hi everyone, um, we're going to tackle rational equations with the variable appearing more than once next. I do want to reiterate that I don't want this to be compartmentalized where you're memorizing steps for rational and radical and linear and quadratic. Um, but I did want to chunk them up a little just so that you could find examples that go with chunks of homework so you could get that practice and come back and look if you're having trouble. Um, so really the strategies are the same for all of these. There might be some special step that we have to do to free up our variable based on the type of equation, but our goals are always free your variable from parentheses, fractions, radicals. Um, I feel like we add to the list later, but that's it for now that I can think of. Move your variable to one side and combine, hopefully getting down to a single variable and then reverse order of operations. So looking at this first one, spot where your variables are very first thing, especially easy when your screen doesn't just jump around. So I have m on either side, one on either side, and they are trapped in fractions. When my variables trapped in fractions, usually one of the first things I do is just clear fractions, find the LCD and multiply by it. Uh, that's actually the only thing I'm seeing here. It's not, there's no parentheses, there's no radicals. So I think if I clear fractions, I'll actually be starting to get in pretty good shape. So the LCD, remember when there's variables, this one's not too hard, I know, but you would go in order. So write down the first denominator, you're going to need everything that shows up. I need an M. Move to the second denominator, 4M, and add anything that you don't already have. So I don't need another M. I don't need 4M squared. Just 4M is good enough. And we are going to multiply the entirety of the right-hand side by 4M and the entire left-hand side by 4M. Just remember that you don't get to pick and choose which parts you multiply. It has to be all parts. So we're going to have 4M... You don't have to write the over one, but if it helps you line up, that's what's happening. Multiplied by 2 over m, and then 3 times 4m is 12m. Make sure you don't lose the minus sign. And then on this side, I really want to just cancel it, but I'll be good and I'll write it. You absolutely are allowed to just cancel it if it's making you crazy to write it again, too. Okay, so let me do it now because I've been wanting to. On the right-hand side, the 4Ms cancel completely, and I'm just left with 11. I like it. On the left-hand side, I can cancel Ms, but I'm left with a 2 and a 4. So that's 8 minus 12M equals 11. And that actually worked out really nicely. I don't have to move Ms to one side because there's only one of them. So now I'm going to say I'm multiplying m by negative 12 and then adding 8. So the first thing I get rid of is the 8 by subtracting. Negative 12m equals 3. The next thing I get rid of is the 12, which is attached by multiplication, negative 12. So I will divide it out, and I get m is equal to negative 1 fourth. Doing a little reducing there, 3 goes into 12 four times. So I end up with one fourth. Okay, so we should be at this point still seeing rational equations that turn into linear equations. As we move on to the next section, we'll start to see rational equations that turn into quadratic equations. So that's the one thing we're saving up right now is what if you can't just get down to one single m in your equation? What if you have m squared and m and you can't combine those? So foreshadowing, but we shouldn't see that yet in this section. Okay, so next one, um, I see my variable. There are two of them. They're on the same side, but they're definitely both stuck in the fraction. So I'm going to go to the same thing and say, okay, well, I need to clear fractions. This one is especially nice because, oh, it's a minus one. There's only one fraction, so I don't really have to think LCD. I'm just going to, oops, what am I doing? Over one. I'm talking too much when I'm trying to write. Multiply both sides by that. And the same thing here, 2w minus 1 gets multiplied by 3. I'm going to rewrite that because you can't see it. So I have a 3 times 2w minus 1. Remember, you can do multiplication whichever order you want. So you can write the 3 in front or in back. On the other side, I get to cancel the 2w minus 1, and I'm just left with 4w. That w has extra wiggles. Okay, um, so my variable is no longer stuck in fractions but it is now stuck in parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute through, still trying to free my variable. 
6w minus 3 equals 4w. And I need to move my variable to one side. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the right-hand side. Always, that's up to you. If it seems like one way will save you a little work, choose that way. That's why I'm going to the right so that I don't have to move the negative 3 around. I get negative 3 equal to negative 2w. No, stop erasing. Um, okay, so finally, one variable on one side, and there's really only one thing left to do. There's a negative 2 attached to the w by multiplication, so I get rid of it by dividing, and I find that w is equal to positive 3 halves. Those negatives will wipe each other out. Okay, I think I'm going to continue through. I think I just have two more. So next, oh, hold on, I'm being really bad. We need to be checking to make sure that we don't have extraneous solutions. So this is one of those non-optional checks. So back up at the beginning, um, just check back and see what values of m would give you trouble. So basically, you're checking for what would make a denominator in the original equation 0. And in this case, the only thing I'd need to worry about is if m was 0, then I'd have 2 over 0 and 11 over 0. Bad news. So I leave out m equals 0. That wasn't one of my answers, which means I'm totally fine with my negative one-fourth. For number two, I can do the same thing at the end. Uh, what I want here is to make sure, so for my check, I want to make sure that 2w minus 1 is not equal to 0. That would be bad. You can't have 0 in the bottom of the fraction, which means 2w, ugh, crazy computer, 2w can't equal 1, so the not equals, you can solve just like an equal to. It doesn't have a direction, so you can add 1 to both sides, and then you can divide both sides by 2, and you see that w can't be 1 half. I got w equals 3 halves, so totally good solution. We keep it. Okay, so now I think I'm ready for this one. Um, I see z's. There's two of them, one on each side. Both are stuck in fractions. So my first step is going to be to try and clear the fractions. Um, I think I do want to mess around with this a little bit first because I can do some factoring of those denominators, and I think it's going to save me a lot of mess, save me from a quadratic. So in this first one, I can factor out a 2. In the second one, um, what I'm seeing is that I got a z minus 4 in the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative 1. You can factor it out of either, but I'm going to go ahead and do it here. So if you do that, you get negative 4 plus z. And generally, the nice way to write that is back as z minus 4. So now we can see that really our denominators match up quite a bit. Um, that minus sign, you can leave it there, but generally what I would do is just either move it to the top or move it out in front. Say this is going to be minus. If it applies to the entire denominator, then you can move it out in front. So the parentheses were important. If there weren't parentheses separating that minus out, I wouldn't be able to move it without messing up the 4. So when I go to make my LCD, all I really need is the 2 and the z minus 4. And actually, as I'm looking, you could even cancel the 2 out, two over, or 6 over 2. I'll just go with this for now, but that would make this even simpler. So I'm going to multiply 2 times z minus 4 by the left-hand side. That's the easy one. There's no distributing. 2 times z minus 4 needs to get multiplied by the right-hand side. That's a little trickier. I do need to distribute. So over here on the left, the entire 2 and z minus 4 cancel, and all I'm left with is a 6. I'm going to write the right out um, before I completely get rid of things. So I'm going to multiply negative 3 by 2 times z minus 4, and I get negative 6 z minus 4. I will distribute that 6 in in a minute, um, but I want to just get the 2 multiplied first. And when I distribute, that'll make sure the z and the 4 are also multiplied by the 2. Uh, then I have minus 3 over, oh, I guess I don't need parentheses.
parentheses, really. C minus 4. C, come on. There, minus 4 times 2 times Z minus 4. I'm going to put that over 1 just so that it lines up nicely. Okay, so I get negative 6z plus 24, and here I get to cancel the z minus 4s, but I am left with a minus 6. So um, I do have, ooh, really? Yep, I do have just one z left on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and here, let's see, what is this? 24 minus 6 is 18. So I'm multiplying by negative 6. I'm adding 18. Let's go ahead and get rid of the 18 first by subtracting. Uh, 6 minus 18 is negative 12 equals negative 6z. And I need to divide by negative 6. And it looks like z is equal to positive 2. I have that non-optional check to do. So I look back at my original equation and um, I can see that I'm going to have trouble if z is equal to 4. So if you can see what's going to give you trouble, that's all you have to do. If not, you can set up the um, 2z minus 8 does not equal 0 and 4 minus z does not equal 0. Both of those should tell you z can't be 4. That's not what I got, so my solution seems fine. So we'll stick with z equals 2. Okay, last but not least, this is starting to get fairly messy. Um, we have denominator t plus 3 that has a variable stuck in it. Denominator t, that's a variable that's stuck in a fraction. And then the last one, we're going to go ahead and factor because we're definitely looking like we're going to need an LCD. The factoring is really important. If you don't do that, you're going to end up multiplying in too many variables and you'll get quadratic or cubic stuff in your equation and you'll get stuck on the solve. Okay, so my LCD, I'm going to just work my way left to right. The first fraction has t plus 3 as a factor. If you need the reminder, you can say that's times 1, times 1. Um, the t and the 3 are not separate, they are terms. The t plus 3 is altogether one factor of the denominator. When I move on to fraction number 2, I'm missing a t, so I add it to the list. And then when I move to the right-hand side, I've already got both the t and the t plus 3, so I'm done. So I'm multiplying by t times t plus 3. And same thing over here, t times t plus 3. Okay, so let me rewrite that so we can see what's happening. So I have t times t plus 3, and I would not distribute that through um, over 1 times 1 over t plus 3, saying right here, I would not distribute the t into those parentheses because I'm hoping to cancel the t or the t plus 3 in every step. And then I have t times t plus 3 multiplied by 2 over t, and then on the other side, uh, the t times t plus 3 cancels completely, so I'm just left with the negative 3. Okay, so going a little further with the left, cancel the t plus 3s out of that one, but you'll be left with t times 1, so t. Um, the next fraction you can cancel t's out of, so you're left with 2 times t plus 3, so which is a 2t plus 6. So I can combine like terms. I get 3t plus 6 equals negative 3. Um, I'm down to a single t on one side. So t is being multiplied by 3, and then I'm adding 6, which means to solve, I'll first subtract 6 to get rid of it, uh, which gives me 3t equals negative 9. And then I'll divide by 3, and I get t equals negative 3. Okay, so long road, but that's looking good. So we have that non-optional check. Looking back at that original equation, you need to make sure the denominators aren't zero. 
So for that first fraction, it looks like we are in trouble. Negative 3 would be bad. If you plug that back in, you'd get 1 over 0. Not good. For the second fraction, we've already eliminated our solution, so it doesn't matter so much now, but just so that you know. Uh, t also can't be 0, and then that covers the last fraction for us. So if your uh, solution ends up being a bad one, we would just say, in this case, no solution. If you only had one answer and you threw it away, there are none left, and that's a no solution. Okay, thanks for watching.